around, so let's see what Cloud9 is going to decide here. So, one oh, of them is actually going to go with a fortress on that one to round out the composition just very quickly on the SK. SK do it. I mean, we speak about it before, but Tyra's rookie player, first live event. Are the nerves getting to him? I don't think so. I think just Cloud9 right now out mechanicking SK. Already a small oh engage, actually. Well, reposition from Joseph. Tyrus in a lot of trouble. This could be first blood already. Joseph takes that one off the board. Jetpacks and Kvalifar now are just running away. Joseph Jetpacks going fairly low. His Sigil to heal him up. It's not enough because Old School is going to finish it off with a basic attack. Kvalifar now using the leftover Sigil for HP, but Cloud9, they're already off to a good start. No mercy for Cloud9 already. Runs straight into that SK composition. Huge, powerful uh, engage from Gabe Bizzle and Old School, obviously, with that Gift of Fire. Splash damage, doing so much work. SK, and actually, that reminded me almost of a StarCraft moment. It was complete rotation of the unhealthy targets from C9 to the back line, making it very difficult for Kavalafar to focus a target and rotating your healthy players to the front line. And it made it so difficult for SK to get work done there. Tyra's was a perfect target to pick off, and I love Joseph pulled the trigger instantaneously. We haven't even talked about the fact that old school, probably the, one of the best lane adagios in the world, has got his lane adagio. He might be schooling Kavalafar after his performance in that first game. Maybe he needs to take up a couple of lessons in uh, laning. We'll have to wait and see. I want to see old school like just perform this game already. We've seen him throughout this series picking up the. Poison Shiv, first item on Vox, and still managing to do work with it. And this time round, C9 have got a go trigger from the afterburn on Isle of Joseph. They can keep up pressure consistently. They can continuously put aggression onto SK, stop Tyrus from hitting his power spikes, put pressure on this Samuel. And it looks like SK are going to have to rotate as a three here because of the threat of the potential invade from C9, the threat of their aggression early on. Kavalafar as well has to be careful because obviously the mortal wounds from that fortress will shut down his survivability and longevity in these team fights. And it will make it a lot easier for old school to get the work done necessary to deal with Kavalafar. I mean, the all in engage from Joseph is something we've seen him time and time again. Very aggressive player and uh, can really just live up to uh, live up to the name. Old School taking a fair bit of damage there. Gabe Bizzle as well is going to have to back off on the Fortress. I mean, the good thing SK have hit right here, right now, is the ability to sustain. They haven't got the Fortress Ultimate just yet. There's no Poison Shiv, obviously. They're probably not going to build it on Old School thus far, but, I mean, that's going to be the massive problem for them in the early game, just surviving. But after that, I mean, the all-in engage from Joseph mixed with Gabe Bizzle's attack of the pack. Old School is just going to have a free time first hitting. Yeah, absolutely. Old School... Working towards that alternating current as well. Big power spike for the Adagio in lane. I love Joseph as well playing the Weapon Power Glaive. And the differences between Weapon Power Glaive and CP Glaive is that obviously he has a lot more early presence in the early game. So obviously he can now then be aggressive, more aggressive than he could have been if he was playing the CP Glaive. And that allows him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Samuel more effectively. CP Glaive isn't as good against Samuel unless he is complemented by someone else. Weapon Power Glaive can do a lot of the work in his own right. He has found himself in SK's jungle, but SK are there to meet him. Kavalafar is going to be there. Bright Ball to just lock him up. After burn away this time, Kavalafar leaps over the wall using that uh, into way. the fray, Pre using it completely the wrong way. Predicted the wrong way that I love Joseph was going to try and find an afterburn. It was a good move, but not quite there. That is the healing camp secured by Kavalafar, actually, so they might look for an engage here, Jaws. Yeah, into the fray is available for Kavalafar. Joseph going fairly low. Vanson Verdict's doing a fair bit of damage from Tyrus into the fray onto the bush there. Uh, I love Joseph will afterburn away, but they're still chasing this one. And Cloud9 will be able to get away, popping those boots, just making sure nice and safely. Uh, a bit of an interesting build there from old school. <laughs> He's got the, did he? Two feet, two boots. Two feet, two boots. Yep. That's about it. I think, uh, did you, if you buy a second tier one boots, I think it might reset the cooldown of the sprint. Because I know when you upgrade your boots, it resets the cooldown of the sprint. Maybe old school thought that he was necessary for him to be able to escape that situation. Well. Oh. <laughs> two feet, two boots. That's all I got Because they share the that. same cooldown, right? But if you okay. buy another one, I think it refreshes the cooldown. So I think he was just saying, I, I, maybe I can invest 300 gold not to die here. Oh, so, I mean, buying those boots on the fly, meaning obviously he does reset the cooldown. Making sure he can get away. Bit of an expensive uh, method of ex exit. Was, was the jungle shop even open when that... I, I, I can't remember. That was just... Maybe, I'm not sure if it was <laughs> a mistake here now. or if there was actually some sort of thought behind it. The only reason I think you would buy two tier one boots is maybe to try and reset the cooldown, but... I'm not even sure if Jungle Shop was open at that point. Well, 
been a, a minute since Jungle Shot was over, so po quite possibly. But Cloud9 still putting on the pressure now, and uh, they do have that range advantage in the lane. That's uh, something else to kind of keep in mind. Old School versus Kvalifar, but Kvalifar kind of used to that. We've seen him time and time again on this Rona pick, and uh, he always does well with it in EU, but bringing it to NA could be a different story. Bring it to an NA team, I oh. should say. Beautiful bright ball watch to stop the afterburn. Doesn't mean he's going to not reposition Tyrus. Tyrus in a lot yeah. of trouble here, actually just goes down regardless. Serpent Sparse mid fight actually picked up for Kvalifar, trying and get the sustain through. Jetpack's in a 1v3 situation. Kvalifar out of the fight. Joseph's going to be able to chase him down and Cloud9 find yet another kill. Yeah, unfortunately, just <laughs> Jetpack's trying to juke between the brushes. <laughs> just because you block the afterburn doesn't mean you haven't blocked the stun portion. You only block the movement from the glaive with that bright ball work. And unfortunately, Tyrez wasn't quite respectful enough of that. He's going to move back in here. Kvalifar, like you said, has got that Serpent's Mask. Here we go. Oh, into the fray. Straight onto Joseph. No sustain from him. Tyrus is going to be able to push forward here. But Fire is actually going to kill Kvalifar on the backside. So actually, that's a one-for-one -one trade as old school is just going to gift a kill over to himself. Have they done enough to protect the turret, though? Because if they have protected the turret, that is completely worth it. Looks like they have. So it's a one-for-one, one, but SK keep their first turret of the game, which keeps that gold manageable between the two teams. That is the most important point from that fight. Remember, global objectives are worth so much more in this game than just the odd few kills here and there. That's why you see a lot of teams so heavily focused on trying to get them early on, because it gives you a massive team-wide global gold boon, which helps you then snowball from that position. What I'm really excited to see is the fact that SK, they have been able to take a game of Cloud9 and quite convincingly so as well. They went on a boot camp before coming here so that give them, you know, the extra experience being in the same house together, you know, not only chilling out but practicing. Another engagement does come out. In fact, Attack the Pack is going to get popped. Right, Bulwark is actually going to stop another afterward. But I love Joseph still in the front line taking a lot of damage but massive oblivion did come through from Tyros just sleeping up two members of Cloud9. And if you needed any illustration as to how powerful Mortal Wounds is against Rona, right there was the situation that it was to come to light. Kavala are absolutely decimated in that fight. Here we go. They're going to go for another fight. Jetpacks actually just walks into his own death. Kvalifar gets repositioned from the afterburn, but he possibly could have gone down there. Old School still kiting back. Madison Burch from Tyrus. They're going to jump straight back onto it, but little energy from the side of Gabe Vizzle and Isle of Joseph just means they cannot follow that up with more kills. SK just aren't tanky enough right now to do the pull the moves that they are trying to. Kvalifar with very little defense means he's relying solely on the Serpent's Mask and the fortified health from his ultimate to keep him alive, and that is just not enough right now. You're seeing he's very very reluctant to commit heavily. He's going to commit here, though. Oh, Red missed onto two people. Joseph's just melting off to burn away. He's going to jump into the fray. That cuts the ultimate versus judgment. Hits Tyrus. Doesn't get a stun. Only a little bit of damage. Does make sure SK are going to have to back off, though. Are just going to triple recall underneath their own turret. That will mean SK, they have got a lot of free time on this turret now. Yeah, they should be able to get this one here as a one for one. That's a really good return here for SK. Despite the kill lead, this will keep them fairly level on gold. Let's take a look at some item spikes being hit left, right, and center. Sorrow Blade from Isle of Joseph picks up a uh, reflex block as well. Tyrus has got his Frostburn, like we said, working towards his next tier three attempt, which is likely to be an Eve of Harvest. But C9, Smell Blood, here comes Ooh, the ultimate. attack of the pack, the Smell Blood, they do. And then comes the Bright Warrior to snare them all up. Red Mist into them all three of them, but it's not going to matter because the healing wasn't there. He ends up going down. Tyrus gets repositioned with the Afterburn. Passageway to safety for Jetpacks. That means Cloud9 is just going to follow you, buddy. They're just going to jump straight on him. Crystal Sentry completely ignored, and that will be Cloud9 with another ace first of this game as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but two, two per series, right? This yeah. is the, the first one they managed to pull off cleanly. And that will give them the pressure on this turret here. Kvalifar's coming back now. Fountain not there, but I mean, you've got to look at how effective these mortal wounds are against Rona. They are devastating. Kvalifar is just not surviving as long as a Rona should do. He's actually working towards a breaking point before itemizing towards defense. Do you know why I like that? Obviously, there is that prep that sort of thought that he should be getting defense at this point, but he's not surviving long enough. He's not dealing anywhere near as much damage. If he's not surviving long enough, what's the best thing he can do? Buff the current life steal that he has. Oh, let's have a look at this replay, by the way. You see that mortal wound, just dead. Rona shouldn't be going down that quickly. She should be able to survive a lot longer than those sort of team tights. So, you know, once he picks up more damage, he'll actually be hitting harder in the small amount of time that he's staying alive, which is better than trying to deal a little bit of damage, but unfortunately not surviving very long either. So he's better for him to go direct damage at this point, I think, to get a high impact engage and then survive as long as he can with the lifesteal and the healing from uh, jetpacks rather than have to invest into defense and just really be a bit of a wet blanket in these team fights. I mean, the key word you said there, I think, would be the engage, right? They've never been 
able to kind of get the engage on Cloud9. Cloud9 have always been engaging on them, and one of the things we saw the Lyra do last game, passageway, bright bulwark to like slow and, you know, make sure everybody's kind of snared up. I love Joseph gets completely diminished from it. There's another attack of the pack getting popped, just making sure they can actually secure this turret. Actually, Tyra is actually popping an infusion there. Bright bulwark does come down with the passageway. I love Joseph repositioning with the afterburn there. <laughs> Jetpacks goes one, two, three through the passageway again. There's another Oblivion actually just missing. Ronin just spinning around and around and around, finally finding the kill on I love Joseph. The Red Mist actually doing work there as the mortal wounds just weren't apparent. SK now going to try and go for the gold mine, although Jetpacks is smelt. Some potential opportunity here. Ultimate's going to get the regen. I don't think C9 are out of this just yet. There is that gold mine to contend with. They have done this kind of turnaround before. Okay, Buzzle's going to step up. Oh, he's going to step up, and it's just wrong time completely. Another red miss just tears through old school, but they're going to be able to trade that back. If the fire oh, finds no! the kill, Tyrus no is going to go down as well. How are Cloud9 doing this? 2v3 situation. They take it with ease. Jetpacks oh. is going to get jumped on as well. The healing comes through from old school onto Gay Fizzle. Ends up falling with the alternating current damage. There's the number two. The ace comes through for Cloud9. Already beating their average with the second ace so early into this game. SK found a fight necessary for, the, for them. They were able to clear out those wolves. Then Tyra's got into a good position to start slamming down with the Malice and Verdicts. But then they overcommitted. They started the gold mine. They broke off and tried to force the engage, which unfortunately was then allowing C9 to regen a little bit. They got that regen camp and they came back in. And then they committed to where the Crystal Miner was as well. SK just picking all the wrong areas to fight. And it hasn't worked out for them at all. Old school just devastating them with the damage output that he has right now. Just, I mean, he's got the infusion in his inventory. Well, he did have the infusion. He used it last fight. I mean, just the amount of damage he's outputting. Still got two tier two boots, by the way. But another engaged attack. The pack comes through. And once more, that bright ball are not doing all too much. Taurus has to exit the fight. Passageway through as well. It's just going to segregate Cloud9. That's going to be a triple block on the Oblivion. Adversity Judgment comes down as well. Three members here from oh, SK. But, but the Red Mist is going to go through. Kavalafar's done it. He's finally found the fight in SK. They finally ace. How in SK do you? That's exactly the way they wanted to play it. Forget trying to engage with the Rona. Let Cloud9 come to you. Use the Drifting Dark. Use the Frostburn. Force them to walk directly into your huge Malice and Verdict hits from Tyra's. That's the better way to approach the fights for SK. Look at Cloud9's composition. What are they going to do? They're going to run at you. Look at this. They start to kite backwards. Tyra's wailing on them with those Malice and Verdicts. That was a massive oblivion. Yes, it got blocked, but the damage came down. And actually, I think... Cloud9 did SK Gaming a favor by channeling that verse of judgment because suddenly Old School was no longer dealing consistent damage with his basic attacks. That was a two second window where Kavalafar got a clean red mist off and there was very little damage output even with the mortal wounds there to take him down. That was, I think, a small mistake from Old School in that fight because it gave Kavalafar the necessary time to deal the damage to deal that, with that backline from C9. But, you know, C9's composition has got one go button, Jaws. Let, allow them to come to you like this. Well, they're going to hit that go button right now. Another afterburn straight onto Tyrus, but Red Mist is just churning through Cloud9. They're just going to disengage for the moment. Old School doing that continuous basic attack damage. Oblivion's going to come out, separate them now. This is SK's time to kind of re-engage. No, Olaf Jones is going to be able to pick up a kill. Old School actually secures it, and Kavalafar's going to go down. That's the majority of their damage just completely gone. Old School chases up for the double kill. Jetpacks on 22 HP. Ends up falling two, and actually Gift of Fire finds the kill. So that's actually a triple kill. The third ace and Cloud9, they're just pushing for the win now. Uh, Cloud9 found a great fight there. I think SK had the right idea though. That Cloud9 were walking directly into a channel where Malice and Verdict was so easy to hit. I think that's exactly what Tyra's wants in these fights. But then Kavalafar and low HP, it was almost like a slow motion movie. He ran at them, taking like about 50, imagine like running, taking like 50,000 bullets, and then he jumped a little bit too late. He was wait, he was kind of too hankering on that cooldown to try and get back in there and use the red mist. They were being far better playing around Tyra's and then allowing Kavalafar to find the re-engage when absolutely necessary. I think SK are too, too focused on trying to get Kavalafar into the fray to do a big, big red mist, rather than play around the fact that they can kite quite readily with this Tyra's Frostburn build and then allow Kavalafar to jump in when they've already done the damage necessary to make it an easier time for Kavalafar to have, um, you know, a cleanup duty, essentially. Well, you ha 
put it perfectly a bit earlier with the Malice and Verdicts. I mean, coming through Drifting Dark in a small corridor, so much damage is going to get applied. And in fact, Passage Rage is going to get followed through. Attack of the Pack as well from Kate Fizzle. They're just focusing Cavalifar now, but he's got the healing. It's got that's what matters. Oblivion comes through. It's going to get blocked. Tyrus is going to be the first casualty of the fight. They're going to solo out Jetpacks, right. and now it's Cavalifar in a 1v3. Ultra is going to get jumped on with Into the Fray and Red Mist. He's going to get repositioned with Afterburn, but I think that's Cloud9 with another it's race. And Kraken spawns the second the fight's over. It's the wrong idea. Like, Cloud9, if, if you're not forcing Cloud9 to make the engage, like, you're doing their job for them. SK, by running into the Cloud9 composition, they're delivering Samuel directly to Cloud9 without even forcing Cloud9 to use an afterburn or a fortress ultimate to make that happen. They are gifting Cloud9 these engages. Take a step back. Cloud9's composition, what does it do? The, o the fortress can only engage. Yes, uh, uh, um, a, a glaive can peel, but it's a weapon power glaive. It's not a cooldown glaive. You can literally get one or two afterburns off per fight, and that's about it. This is an engaged composition from Cloud9. Why do that job for them? Why give them the engage? Use your kiting with the Frostburn on this Samuel and then allow them to come to you. That gives you the best opportunity of getting the damage down necessary to turn the fight around. But SK don't quite get that. They think they need to they think they need to like barrel in onto old school and kill him, but they don't really have the composition to do that. Don't really have the huge amount of burst damage from the Rona. She's a sustained damage fighter and she can't sustain very well against the Mortal Wounds Jaws. There we go, SK is kind of last stand here. They're going to jump in, Cavalifar on the back line. They're nice block from Tyra's actually on the afterburn. Red Mist onto Old School, he's going to enter the frame as well. He's going to jump straight on top of it, but it's not going to matter. Mortal Wounds, Oblivion as well, he's going to get blocked. And now will be Cavalifar falling once more. C9, they're just going to push for the win here. Tyrus is going to end up going down, and that is going to be it. The history books are just going to continue to be NA taking out EU in best of fives. Game number three goes over to Cloud9. What an absolute amazing series played by them. Now, he talks about the engages from SK. I feel like they needed to make that engage because Kraken was there. So they could just let C9 dance around with the Kraken and then take the turrets. It was a last-ditch attempt from SK, but C9, their kiting was on point. Again